The following program is being paid for by Creflo Dollar Ministries. I'm a world changer. Let's join Dr. Creflo Dollar for today's message. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I, I want you to really focus on these scriptures and don't allow tradition to dictate to you what it has said. But I want you to listen to what the word, the word is saying. In the gathering of the eagles, I began to teach that until a man has character, walks in love, and until he understands godliness and righteousness, he's not ready for prosperity. Because he'll crave materials more than he tra craves God. And you've got to crave godliness more than anything. But I want to show you the principle first. And I want you to understand that you're to never seek after stuff things, none of that over and above the way you seek after God and godliness and walk in love with people and all that stuff, okay? But this is a very important uh, teaching because I believe that's just where we are. In other words, when natural things are no longer working anymore, thank God we have the supernatural. But we're going to have to understand the supernatural in order to override some of those things in the natural that are not working uh, the way it, it should work. And so, you know, you, you trust God, you, you, you trust the blood of Jesus, but then you begin to understand some things and then you begin to initiate them. And I believe your faith in it will begin to see it come to pass. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 9, verse 11. I'm going to begin at verse 7 and read down to 11. He says, Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn, Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sake? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresh, threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Now the Amplified beginning in verse 10 says, Or does he speak certainly and entirely for our sakes? Assuredly it is written for our sakes, because the plowman ought to plow in hope. And the thresher ought to thresh in expectation of, of partaking of the harvest. Well, I want to show you how to be a partaker of the anointing. He said these things are even natural laws. But there's sometimes that people don't know how to partake of an anointing. An anointing that you have as a member of this local church, an anointing that you have because of your divine connection an anointing that you have uh, or can be a partaker of. I mean, some tape that you listen to and it really blessed you and changed your life and you want, you want to partake of that anointing. You want to participate in that anointing. You want to see that anointing on you. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Well, how do you partake of that? Surely it began to talk about natural things and you should be partakers of the harvest of the seed, if a man plants a seed in the ground, he certainly should be a partaker of the harvest of the seed that he planted in the ground. But now this part, verse 11, if we have sown unto you, the Amplified said, if we have sown the seed of a spiritual good among you, is it too much if we reap from your material benefits? Now, 
I'm going to take you through some scriptures where I know these guys, Saul and some other guys, I know they got the anointing on them. But I want to back up and see previously what happened, what was going on before they were participating in that anointing. I want to back up and see what was going on before they were partakers of that anointing. So I want to look at this thing that happened between Samuel and Saul in the Old Testament to see if we can find this principle that if you've received something spiritual, he says, is it a great deal that we should receive of your material things? Uh, or is there some connection between the exchange and exchange of materials for spiritual things? Because if you mention it to, to people who don't have been in the word long enough, they'll just kind of just shoot it down without paying attention to what I'm saying. There is a, a law of, um, um, I forget, we've got the name of it, I can describe it to you. It's a law of light kind. In other words, uh, earthly things go with earthly things. And uh, spiritual things go with spiritual things. But sometimes we try to exclude the earthly things and we want to get earthly things, but we don't acquire those earthly things from earthly things. We try to get real spooky and spiritual and we want out of the spiritual for something physical to fall out. And God is like saying, no, 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 no. Like you don't go and, you know, wealth is not going to fall out the sky. You have to acquire it. Uh, corn is not just going to come out the ground. There's got to be a seed planted. Uh, and so th this, this miracle of this, this light kind, I've got to have a physical seed to produce a physical harvest. I've, I've got to have physical things and use it to acquire other physical things. There's an exchange all through the Bible. Uh, I mean, that's what the whole cross was about. He exchanged uh, his righteousness for our sin. <laughs> you know, exchanges all over the Bible. And yet when we talk about exchanges in, in areas where the anointing, we see an anointing and think that anointing is going to be on us without exchange. And so I want to show you how and, and, and just give you testimony of how I operated in an exchange. I saw an anointing on Brother Copeland's life. I wanted that anointing on my life and I operated in an exchange for that anointing to operate on my life. Now you can look back and say, well, I don't believe that. Yeah, but I got that anointing. It's operating in my life. And I'm not just talking about through teaching. I'm talking about what's functioning and flowing in his life is functioning and flowing in my life. I had to learn how to partake of that anointing. And I had to learn how to participate in that anointing. And so one of the key things is this scripture that he says in 1 Corinthians 9. If we have given unto you spiritual things. Then... I, I would imagine he was kind of preaching to people who just would never heard of this thing before. He says, well, is it a big deal that we should receive of your, King James says, carnal things. Amplified says material things. Okay? Because I want to show you just what you're missing out on as a member of the church. When the offering comes around, that's just not the time to take up money to pay the bills. That's an exchange moment. That's an, a moment. That's a moment where you can partake of an anointing instead of just letting that moment go by because if I've preached unto you spiritual things you now will have an opportunity to partake of the anointing on that thing that's why I moved the offering at the end of service so I can get in order with it me give you spiritual things then you respond to be a, to be a partaker of those spiritual things in and upon your life if you understand what I'm going at you. Now, uh, 1 Samuel. Let's go check out what, what happens here. 1 Samuel chapter 9. Let's look at verse 2. Let's kind of start there a little bit. He had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person. Check that out. 
Well, that's a goodly person, a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any other people. Okay, so I guess they're describing a pretty broad-shouldered, tall, in stature kind of guy. And the asses, or the donkeys, okay? And everybody's watching this broadcast. We're talking about donkeys. <laughs> And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were what? Lost. lost. They were lost. And then, of course, he said, take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go seek the asses. Now, <laughs> where are they? Go and find them. Go and seek them. And uh, they went through Mount Ephraim and they went through some other places and, and then in verse 5 they came to the land of Zoph and Saul said to his servant that was with him come let us return lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us obviously they've been gone for a while we need to go back and, 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 and uh, give a report in and in verse 6 and he said unto him now obviously all of the things that they were doing in the natural they were not being successful in locating these, these donkeys, or as the King James refers to as the asses. And he said unto him, Behold now, here's their solution now. There is in the city a man of God. He is an honorable man. All that he saith comes surely to pass. Now let us go hither peradventure. He can show us our way that we should go. All right, so what is he saying here? We can't find these donkeys nowhere. But I know a man of God in the city. He's an honorable guy. And everything the guy says comes to pass. Maybe if we can go to him, he can point us to the way that we ought to go. Now, let me tell you what they, what they were thinking of or may not been aware of, but here's what was going on. There's a man that has an anointing. Let's go and see if we can partake of what he has to show us what we need to, to know. You, you see that clearly. If not, you'll see it as we read. Verse 7. Then said Saul to his servant. Now listen to what Saul said. And this is what got my attention to this. Look, look what Saul said. But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man for the bread is spent in our vessel. There is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Somewhere in their time, they knew that don't expect to partake of anything without something to exchange. They said, we don't have anything to present to him. We're going to try to get him to tell us where the donkeys are and 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 we, we don't the bread's gone and what do we have to bring for an exchange now let me ask you something is this is that hard for you to believe when you go to the grocery store to get some groceries you you see that you know that in order for you to walk out of that grocery store with some groceries you have to come with something to exchange how many y'all believe that if you don't Go to the store after we dismiss and go test it out. Just walk in there and start picking up stuff. And then walk out. And you know what's going to happen? Whoa! Where's the exchange for this? Okay? It's not hard to believe that in the natural. But when it comes to spiritual things, we struggle with the exchange because we've been inundated with all of the beliefs that this is, you know, that everything that deals with God is a freebie. That salvation don't cost you nothing. Salvation costs you everything you have. So there's always an exchange. You look, every issue that you have between you and God, if you're successful in it, there's going to be an exchange of something. I want to be anointed. Well, there's got to be an exchange for the anointing. I want answers. Well, there's got to be exchange with prayer. There's always going to be an exchange of something. And it even works in the natural. If you want your wife to treat you a certain way, there's got to be an exchange, isn't it? 
there's always an exchange. If the ground's going to give up corn, there's got to be an exchange. You've got to give it seed. But when it comes to God, we just kind of sit there like, here I am. And you know what? He's doing the same thing in heaven. <laughs> and? Okay. So, they said, we don't have anything. And look what they suggested in verse 8. And the, and the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That, I, that, that, that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. I'm going to give that to the man of God and that he may tell us our way. One of the things that took place here is that these guy, guys understood the system of exchange necessary to partake of this guy's anointing. Okay? Now, you move down, and, and I would it, it please advise you to you know, continue to, to, to read that story. It's got some interesting things, but I want to move down to chapter 10. Now, remember... Remember what he did, and now watch as he partakes of the anointing. Watch what this man is anointed. Samuel was big time anointed. You understand? Samuel was also the guy that died, and Saul, when things were going crazy, hired some witch lady to say a few things over his grave to raise him up. And Samuel said, why are you disturbing my rest? It's in, the, it's in the scripture. You read that. It just kind of freaks me out. I have lots of questions about that whole deal. And, and then told him, I think Samuel told Saul something like this. This time, by such and so day, you're going to be with me. And it came to pass, and Saul died. And one of, the reasons, one of the reasons he died is because he wasn't satisfied with his portion. And he started comparing and jealousy came in and a demon spirit came in because he was not grateful with the portion that he had and wasn't thankful for the portion he had. But that's another sermon. Now, let's go to verse 10 and, and look at Saul partake of Samuel's anointing Obviously, as a result of this encounter we just read about, this exchange that just took place. 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial, a vial of oil. All represents the anointing. He poured it upon his head. He kissed him. He said, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today... Then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father has left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Now, so they got what they were seeking. The exchange allowed them to receive instructions from Samuel about what to do and what to watch out for in order for them to find the asses. He says, you're going to meet two men. They're going to say these things to you. And he says, he, they're going to tell you that they're found. And that's the end of that. But now notice what happens, ladies and gentlemen. His exchange allowed him to partake of the anointing. And notice, the anointing was on his head. He was anointed to be captain. And then once that anointing came on him, the first thing he saw in manifestation was restoration. Restoration. The asses that you, that you went to seek are now found. Well, nothing just happened. Say that. Nothing just happened. <laughs> Say it again. Nothing just happens. <laughs> and I think sometimes we read the Bible, we, 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 we skip all of the what took place to get this to happen. And we get to those exciting places about... Well, the anointing was on him, and he was anointed to be captain, but we don't want to pay attention to what he did to ignite this moment. What did he do to turn this moment on, to make this moment possible? That they, they, they didn't go in 
with the attitude of let's go ask him if we can partake of his anointing so he can show us where the ashes are. No. Huh. They went in saying, I know an honorable man. Everything he says is true. Let's go and make an exchange to partake of that anointing. And when they made that exchange, then the ashes were found. He was anointed as captain. The ashes were found, restoration. And then if you move on down here, other things started happening. Then thou shalt go forward. So now he's not only having the results of the anointing restoration, but now he has supernatural progress. And then if you're going down a little bit more, and they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread. Well, now you see favor. Things are happening for him that he didn't even ask for. And then this guy gets so drunk in the anointing that he starts to, to dance and he starts to praise God with all of those guys that they ran into, a bunch of folks that were playing an instrument and praising God. And the Bible says he had a change of status. He was turned into another man. So he not only partook of the anointing to find the asses, but at the end of the day, that exchange completely changed who Saul was. And now he was anointed to be king of Israel. Because he understood that it takes an exchange to get involved with that anointing. That it takes an exchange to be a partaker of that anointing. Now, I, I was thinking about another situation just dealing with Jesus himself. Um, well, actually two of them. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. And the other one I'll see if I can find in a minute. <laughs> Luke chapter 8, I just sense that something supernatural is about to break loose, and I feel like I'm coming close to being under this directive to begin to train you in, in the area of, of walking in the blessing and, and, and knowing practically what to do to turn certain things on in your life. I don't care who don't want to hear it. I'm going to teach it to you and you can be the demonstration of it. And then everybody else can come ask you questions. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this, man. I'm so ready for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Especially when we get to the blood coming out the hands. Oh, shut up now, boy. When we get to the blood coming out the hands, I'm gone. I'm just. <sighs> Notice this. Here's the parable here of the sore in Luke chapter eight, verse one. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city, referring to Jesus, and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Boy, she got free, didn't she? And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's servant, and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Now the Amplified says, uh, who ministered to and provided for him and then out of their property and personal belongings. So here we see the connection again. Here are, here are they mentioned these, these ladies specifically and then they said that there were others. They are, they are partaking of the anointing that's on Jesus. And at the end, we see the exchange of material things. We see the exchange of the carnal things that 1 Corinthians 9 was talking about. The ministry, the anointing, they're partaking of it. This woman got delivered of devils. Another one got healed. They were partakers of the anointing on Jesus. They didn't have it on them. So obviously what they were exchanging, their, their own personal goods put them in a position to participate in that anointing and to be a partaker of that anointing. But the devil don't want you to know that. That's why he's got to make these teachings seem like they're so carnal, got to make me seem like I'm some kind of crook. And again, anybody that talks about it is to keep you away from being a partaker of this anointing. 
and I am going to teach it. Put that camera right here. I am going to teach it. Do not touch that dial. All right, because listen, if it was good enough for them to do it back in Jesus' day, and if it is in writing where we can sit here and read it, I'm just pulling these points out so you can see that in each case, we see the fulfillment of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Everything in the kingdom of God requires an exchange. And God has his part and you have yours. A natural example is when you exchange money for items at a store. So likewise, in the Walking in Power series, I show you why an exchange is required to partake of spiritual things as well. Now to learn more, call or get this series online. It's time to tap into God's anointing and elevate your walk with him to a whole new level. If you're born again, you belong to Jesus and you're a descendant of the tribe of Judah. Now this tribe is anointed for conquest and victory. And our monthly offer, The Takeover, will train you on how to walk in that anointing and get sweatless victories in your life. Now along with that six CD series, you'll get the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Now it's a phenomenal Bible study resource that includes over 7,000 entries, 500 full color maps, and much more. Now you may call or purchase these tools online for a love gift of 120 US dollars or more. Or you may get the Takeover series for a love gift of any amount. So order and discover how to be more than a conqueror in life. And at the same time, you'll be assisting this ministry to bless others with the love of Jesus Christ. I thank God for all the people who support this ministry financially. Your love gifts empower us to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ all over this world. Now, if you'd like to send in an offering, you may do so by calling the number on your screen, writing in or giving online. My prayer is that God's blessing will be upon your life today and always. People are talking, and here's what they're saying about the 2011 Change Experience. It's just been so awesome. You just feel the anointing when Taffy and Crossbow Dollars share the word. When the enemy shows up and he tries to do something to us, that's the, that's the time for us to put our boxing glove on and say, all right, you, you want some of me? You, 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 want, you, want, you want some of me? Praise and worship, love praise and worship. I was like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Come see for yourself, Friday, September 16th, when Creflo and Taffy visit Detroit, Michigan. You gotta fight for your children, you gotta fight for your marriage, you gotta fight for your position, you gotta fight for what belongs to you. You'll have a great time with comedian Akinjunde. And make sure you come early for a special Arrow Recording Artist Musical Showcase. You don't want to miss the Detroit Change Experience, September 16th at the Cobo Center. Session times are 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. Register early and secure your seat today. If you are ever in the Atlanta or New York areas, we invite you to join us. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org for service times and locations. It is people like you who help make it possible to spread the Word of God. We thank you for your continued support. The preceding program was paid for by Creflo Dollar Ministries.